On today's show, we're going to talk about a few different modifications you can make to your crawler harnesses. Hey there, outdoor YouTubers. It's Dave Knetter from Knetter's Practical Outdoors. And you know, you guys out there that walleye fish, uh, there's probably a really good chance that uh, most of you have fished with crawler harnesses at one time or another. It's a very popular method for catching walleyes. And in fact, I think if you were to uh, ask like all the walleye fishing tournament pros, if you were to ask them, hey, if you had one method and you could only use one method for the rest of your career, one method to go out and try to win these walleye tournaments, what would that method be? I bet a very high percentage of them would say pulling crawler harnesses. That's uh, That technique has won a lot of walleye fishing tournaments over the years. It's put a lot of uh, walleyes in the freezer, you know, for guys like me and you. A crawler harness is kind of that perfect combination of that, that kind of that longer distance attraction of that spinner, you know, something that catches fish's eye, something they can feel in their lateral lines, you know, that blade spinning through the water. And then when they go to investigate, it's got that, you know, it's got that live hunk of meat on it. That, that real, you know, meat on it that kind of seals the deal and gets them to bite it. Great Lakes trout and salmon guys, you know, I think they're, they, they're kind of eons ahead of us uh, when it comes to that sort of thing. You know, attracting fish from a distance and then sealing the deal with scent or, or something real or, or uh, a, some piece of dead bait, something like that. You know, one, one big technique that a lot of these Great Lakes salmon and uh, lake trout guys use are these herring dodgers. You know, they pull this through the water and then, you know, they'll have like a fly on the end of it like this one. They'll maybe have a fly and a hunk of uh, like sucker meat, you know, a hunk of dead bait on there. Sometimes they rig up, you know, frozen herring to the back of these herring dodgers. Sure. It's just this alone. They come up to them and they get a good look at it and something, something kind of red flags them. Something tells them it's just not quite right, doesn't smell right, doesn't quite look right. It's really not something that I'm used to eating down here. And you know, and that's where you want to have that trailer with something behind it that looks a little bit more realistic, that smells a little bit more realistic. And, and I think it's the same thing uh, with a crawler harness. These uh, crawler harnesses coming through the water, blades are spinning, you know, catching fish's eye, attracting them from a distance, and then like I say, now you got that crawler hanging right on the end, that, that good hunk of real live meat to kind of seal the deal and get the rig bit. The thing though that we're kind of being clued into with all the electronics out there that we use when we're fishing, whether it's an underwater camera, whether we're out uh, ice fishing with a sonar unit, um, you know, some guys are, are putting their cameras down on downriggers, some guys are putting just putting their cameras down and they're, they're running a spinner or a lure right behind it. And we really get to see how these fish react to these things. And one thing that's surprising to me, uh, you know, if, if you go out uh, on YouTube, you know, just like you are now, and you can look at some of these videos, what's surprising to me is how often fish will come in aggressively, whether it's, uh, you know, a, a crawler harness, they, they come chasing up to a crawler harness and and they're being quite aggressive or even sometimes you know uh, you'll have some underwater footage of somebody with a jigging rapala and this walleye comes from a great distance sometimes it seems like they come in pretty aggressive and funk, and then they just kind of stop and they're staring at it and it's surprising how often this fish will just turn and swim away or they'll be following that crawler harness for quite a while looking, looking, and then they'll just veer off and turn away. And you know, you gotta, you gotta think, well, these are pretty aggressive fish. They expended all that energy to come over and investigate, you know, whatever this might be, whether it's a jigging rapala through the ice, whether it's a crawler harness or whatever. They expended a lot of energy, but the, you know, these underwater cameras are kind of showing us that uh, sometimes when they get up close, they're not fooled or something doesn't seem right to them, or some kind of a red flag popped up, and they didn't ultimately hit the presentation. And, you know, 
Of course, there's probably many reasons for that. I suppose sometimes the fish are, are just curious. Maybe they're not interested in eating. Uh, they're just curious of what that thing is swimming through the water, but uh, I don't think that that's really common with them. I, I don't think uh, too many animals out in the wild can afford to just run around and be curious about things, you know. Um, I think most of the time they probably do. If they're expending a lot of energy to swim over to that lure, um, I think they, they have it on their mind. It's something that they are going to want to eat. But then when they get close, when they get a good look at it, uh, something kind of tells them, nah, this just doesn't seem right. So, and, and that's where I think the crawler harness really shines. Because when they get close, there's that real hunk of meat, and it kind of seals the deal, and uh, a lot of times they'll go ahead and bite it. But not all the time. Well, why, why aren't they, they biting it all the time? Especially these fish that kind of seem aggressive, come from a great distance. Well, even with that real hunk of crawler, that real hunk of real meat, uh, that most walleyes just love to eat. Even with that being there, I think sometimes it just doesn't seem right. You know, that the spinner being right there, although that spinner may have attracted them, ultimately when they get nose to nose with it and start chasing it around, uh, that spinner just doesn't look right to them, you know. And, and that's another thing that these underwater cameras are showing us. You know, you watch some of these videos of people pulling spinners with crawlers. A lot of times these fish do just kind of follow along behind. You know, now sometimes there's real aggressive fish and they just come flying out of nowhere and hit the things. But these ones that are even coming behind, sometimes they're kind of just, just nibbling at that crawler. You know, like almost like they're tasting it. Like, ah, it doesn't look right and, and they want to taste it. And, and sometimes they'll get convinced and wham, they'll hit it the rest of the way. But one thing I've noticed watching some of these underwater videos, I don't see a lot of the fish come up and just kind of hit this spinner. You know what I mean? I, I don't think the spinner is really convincing them ultimately at the end. Now I'm not going to say it never does. You, you can catch walleyes on a plain spinner with no crawler at all on it. You know, I think we all kind of know that. Spinners catch a lot of other fish too. So I mean they do work, but I think oftentimes if that fish is just a little bit hesitant, um, it really doesn't get convinced by this spinner. You know, I don't see a lot of the fish coming up and trying to hit the spinner or nibble at the spinner. It's always back on this crawler. And, uh, you know, I think that kind of tells us something, you know, that the spinner, although it attracted, it attracted them, maybe from, from even a long ways away, it's not a deal sealer in the so end. One variation that I've been experimenting with with my crawler harnesses is uh, you know kind of getting rid of these uh, these traditional two hook setups or the three hook setups and I've been tying on one single slow death hook and you know and I, a lot of guys are doing that you know it's, it's, it's become a pretty popular thing to do but the other thing that I've been experimenting with is I've been setting this hook back away from the beads away from the spinner you know three to five inches and and the idea here is I think sometimes that fish gets attracted from a ways away that spinner attracts them they come up and and they kinda like what they see with that crawler but when that spinner is so close to it it just doesn't really look like something they normally eat you know I think sometimes even though that spinner attracts them from a ways away I think when they get close to it, when they get nose to nose with that, that spinner just doesn't seem right to them. And, and that's why I've been setting this hook, you know, like I say, maybe three to five inches back. I think, again, the spinner still attracts them, attracts them over, they come up to it, and now instead of this spinner and this crawler being like right close together, they're actually separated a little bit. This crawler is hanging off back here. It's, it's kind of separate from the spinner, you know. Very much like running these heron dodgers and having uh, this fly or the hunk of cut bait away from the herring dodger, I think the fish see it as a, as a different entity altogether and maybe it really convinces them that it's something for them to eat. Instead of having that spinner so close, I think it kind of looks odd to them sometimes. Of course, not all the time. You know, sometimes uh, fish will slap at anything you put down there, but sometimes when the fish are just, you know, not 
completely 100% all in. I think having this uh, this hook set back with the crawler set back a little bit, you know, being separate from this spinner, it maybe uh, convinces them a little bit more that yeah, just that crawler there, that's that's something that I normally eat. You know, the spinner seems like it's uh, something separate from that. And I know a lot of you guys might be saying like. You know, uh, how many walleyes really run around eating night crawlers all the time? And, you know, uh, in a natural environment, you know, probably not very many. But I think what they really believe that crawler is, is a minnow, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of swimming like a minnow. You stick it on this uh, these slow death hooks. It's, it's kind of twisting back there. And, and I think the walleyes actually believe that uh, that crawler is actually a minnow. I've been putting these slow death hooks behind these flatfish. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I've always called these flatfish. I, I think maybe these might be called quickfish now. I don't know if the company changed names or something. But anyways, maybe they're two different things. But I've been putting these slow death hooks, again, three to five inches behind flatfish. And a couple things that does for me. One is these flatfish are very buoyant. So whatever sinker system I'm using with them, whether it's a bottom bouncer, whether it's a snap weight, whether it's a few split shot pinched on, this flatfish is, is very buoyant and it's always trying to, to go up. And the sinker system is usually going to be a little bit lower than it. So when I'm dropping it down, if it hits bottom, a lot of times this flatfish is holding this crawler up off the bottom. Um, if I've got these out on planer boards, I, it's not something I have the rod in hand and the depth changes some. I think that sinker system as it rides up, maybe it hits bottom and it starts riding up, you know, if, uh, if you're going into shallower water and this really buoyant flatfish will just rise up carrying the crawler behind it. And, and I think you kind of stay away from snags a little bit. You kind of st stay away from picking up debris off the bottom. So I do like running these uh, flatfish uh, behind the boards. Um, you know, another thing that these flatfish do for me that's, that's a little bit different than the conventional spinner blade crawler harness is you can fish these super duper slow. I mean, if you are moving at all, these things have a lot of wiggle to them and that, that's kind of nice. I, I actually use these uh, flatfish uh, pulling crawlers. Um, a lot of times I'll use them wind drifting. You really don't have to be going fast at all. Where, where sometimes with the spinner blades, you know, you, you do need at least a little bit of speed. You know, you, you, a lot of times you got to be at least approaching like one mile an hour to make sure those blades are spinning all the time. So there you have it, guys. You know, a few variations uh, to your uh, normal crawler harnesses. You know, the one being uh, going with these slow death hooks, you know, instead of the traditional two or maybe three hook uh, crawler harnesses. But uh, the one thing that's got me excited is running this hook, like I say, three to five inches behind this spinner blade. I really think those tentative fish are much more comfortable hitting this crawler if it's separated away from this blade. I think sometimes when it's right up tight to that blade, it, it, it kind of looks a little funny to them. You separate this out, and I do feel like I'm getting a bit more. I, I think they're much more comfortable hitting this crawler when it's out away from the spinner. Even just a few inches, I think it makes a difference. And also, uh, don't be afraid to put one of these slow death hooks, you know, three to five inches behind one of these flatfish. Uh, again, this is a very buoyant rig. It's going to keep you up off the bottom. And also, at super slow speeds, you're going to get all kinds of... Uh, fish attracting wiggle out of these things. Even, even at slow speeds that you might be concerned aren't fast enough to spin your spinner blades on your regular crawler harness, you'll get lots of good wiggle out of those flatfish. So like I say, uh, sometimes when you're wind drifting, even if the wind isn't that strong, uh, I, I will go to those uh, flatfish and, and I know I've got that good movement down there attracting fish. Uh, and hey, you know, if any of you guys go and try any of these methods uh, that we talked about today, um, give me some feedback, you know, let, let me know, or, or is anybody else catching fish by using any of these methods? Uh, I'd really be curious to know. 
uh, if you guys are catching walleyes on your lakes, you know, I, I know they're, they're working on the lakes that I fish, so I, I'd really be curious to hear back from you guys. So, so leave some comments if you go out and try any of these things. And also, remember to hunt, fish, laugh, repeat. This is Dave Kinetter from Kinetter's Practical Outdoors. Hey, thanks for watching and God bless.